One of the things I'm really determined is that we actually end up with a product which is useful and valuable contribution to policing. And not just policing in London or in certain forces, but actually is useful to England and Wales. And certainly the whole funding through the Transformation Board is about how we can help support learning and development across the country. Now if we are going to achieve that, I'm determined that right from the outset we work with all forces, we really engage with all forces. And an initial step will be, we'll be actually baseline the activity in all forces. But really I want to encourage all forces, you know, who want to contribute, and many are already contributing to this work and help shape the initial ideas, to carry on working with us to make sure we meet their needs. I think L&D departments would want to get involved with this project because of the amount of knowledge and experience they have to offer. And this isn't about the size of the force you're from. You know, this knowledge sits out there in all sizes of force and all the different experiences and contexts in which they operate. And I think that it would be foolhardy for us not to invite and encourage everybody involved in police L&D to play some part in this, if they're able to. And I think they should really reflect on um, how they can be shaping the future ahead of them because I think this is the time it won't come again. I think it's, if, if forces get involved with this project and obviously particularly learning and development departments, um, they will, it's better to be on the front foot and, and get yourself organised as quickly as possible so you're ready or at least you're on, on the way for when these new qualifications, when you, you have got to be collaborating with that university or, or delivering different things in a different way, the sooner you get on the boat, the more you can shape what that looks like. The best part about this project is that everybody can be involved. And they can be involved by one, contacting us, you know, asking whether we have the capacity to do this, but we will do our best to try to service as many learning and development units across the country to help to dialogue individually, one-on-one, -on -one, to help them think about where they are and where they want to go. Bringing in the knowledge base that we collect across the country so you'll benefit from talking to us because we will really be a repository of knowledge. So what we are in the process of setting up is what we're calling a national learning network. We're looking at the different ways that this might function, um, but what's essential about this for us is that it doesn't provide you with yet another set of meetings to go to or yet another set of email addresses to, to use, but actually that we, um, we layer this onto existing networks which we know you're part of, whether those, those are part of um, Peter Ward's National Learning and Development Network um, or others that are in place already. So we will be building on those to enable that learning. And I think really importantly as well, using the Open University's skills and experience um, at sort of the creative facilitation of learning um, and virtual learning rather than um, whatever actual real place, real time learning. I think there's a number of benefits in sharing ideas across police forces and interestingly we have a quite a strong evidence base on this from other public services which have been involved in sharing ideas and practices. So the first is that it actually saves on time and energy and effort because if one police force has invented an idea or trialled an idea then it can save time for um, uh, another force which is uh, picking up uh, that idea. So it, it really is uh, quite efficient in that sense. The second thing though is that when ideas are shared between different organisations, they often need to be adapted uh, to a different uh, context as well. So there may be some adaptation going on. It's not copy and paste into a different police force. It's actually thinking about, well, we've seen this idea elsewhere. Will it work uh, with us, with our demands, with our culture, with our staff? and officers uh, and so on. So that's uh, really uh, important. I think one of my other roles as programme director is to make sure that, you know, that the people involved in a wider policing community 
know about our work, understand about our work, and really start to see some of the potential benefits that our programme can deliver. So I personally have been engaging at you know, chief officer level with police and crime commissions who play such a vital role in policing landscape, but also with the staff associations, the superintendents association, the federation, and I think even starting to think about you know, the wider policing community Though this project is focused heavily on police officers, I think there will be an awful lot of learning we can take to police staff. And again, they face some of the similar challenges as we do, as, as police officers do. And we need to address some of those concerns straight away. Doing this video to, I suppose, at a basic level, to, um, I suppose, share information about the project, raise the exposure of the project and I think particularly I'm interested in seeing if this video can reach beyond the audience we've already been speaking to who are the learning and development leads on the whole um, and provide us with an opportunity to communicate more broadly um, throughout the policing service um, to people for whom learning and development is not necessarily their day job but for whom this project and the wider transformation, workforce transformation um, activity underway um, actually has real importance. So from through the frontline um, management and then up to senior management, chief constables and police and crime commissioners as well. We are there as public servants to police um, with consent um, the, the United Kingdom and therefore, you know, we should never lose the trust and confidence of members of the public. So ultimately, whatever we do, this is about making sure we've got highly trained, highly skilled, independent thinking officers that are able to do a, a, fant a fantastic job for the, you know, members of the public within the UK. Why do I like working in l and I suppose I am a professional learning and development practitioner, so it's an area I've chosen go into, to go into myself, and, and, and I'm professionally qualified in that area. Um, to be able to make sure, I, I like the fact that I work in a workplace rather than, let's say, a university, because I think that combination of workplace and education creates, uh, well, the, the right sort of workplace that has gives the right output, and I for the police service that's serving the public um, and so I yeah I feel it's a worthwhile thing to do. We'd like to invite all police forces uh, to get involved in this project and keep in touch with us. Uh, you can either email me directly as uh, director of the OU team uh, or be in contact with Lizzie Peters at MOPAC uh, and we have a mailbox, an email box dedicated to this project. Uh, you're also welcome to phone us up uh, uh, or have a discussion um, about this work. <laughs>